All right, fellow slayers, time to take a look at the next episode of season two, Reptile Boy. Buffy, Xander, and Willow are hanging out at Buffy's house watching a Hindi movie. Xander points out, despite having no money or place to go, they are still having fun. Willow gives them an option to go out, but Buffy says she's happy to stay home and be a regular girl. She says there have been no demons or vampires to slay, and she's happy with the apparent lack of activity at the Hellmouth. Meanwhile, a girl jumps out of a second floor window of a frat house. She's chased into a cemetery by three guys wearing ceremonial robes. Before she can get any further, another guy in a ceremonial robe steps in front of her. He admonishes the girl and asks where she's going, telling her the party is just getting started. The next day at school, Cordelia is talking to one of her friends about laughing uproariously at anything that a guy might say and to always maintain eye contact. Buffy and Willow discuss Buffy's dreams about Angel and how frustrated they are making her. Willow points out that she thinks Buffy and Angel are perfect for each other, other than the fact that Angel is a vampire. She tells Buffy to ask him out for coffee, that way they could spend time together without too much of a commitment. Cordelia then brags to Xander that she's dating a college guy. She points out that she's more sophisticated because she's now dating a Delta Zeta Kappa fraternity boy. Giles. Giles presses Buffy to train harder, but she just wants to be a teenager. Later that afternoon, Richard Anderson comes by the school to see Cordelia, and his friend Tom Mortar becomes Tom Mortar becomes interested in Buffy. Cordelia introduces Buffy to them and Tom invites her to the party, but she turns him down, claiming she is involved with someone. Giles calls Buffy and she leaves. At night during patrol, Buffy encounters Angel. He smells blood in a bracelet Buffy finds on the ground. When Buffy asks Angel about getting coffee. Angel tells Buffy that their age difference is a problem and that she does not know what she wants in life. She runs off. At school, Buffy agrees to go to the, go to the frat party with Cordelia. Later that night, Giles and Will discover that the bracelet is from Kent Preparatory School, just outside of Sunnydale. Several girls have gone missing over the past few years, which is located near where Buffy is partying. Angel appears at the library and asks about Buffy. Will then, reveal, Will then reveals to them that Buffy is at, is at a party. They question Buffy's reason for lying to them, and Willow yells at them. Ripper and Giles are pushing her too hard, and for an angel for stringing Buffy along and not making time for her. They rush off to help tell Buffy and Cordelia. At the party, Buffy notices immature behavior by drunken frat guys. Xander sneaked in to protect Buffy, but other party girls recognize him for a crasher. They force him to put on women's they force him to put on some women's clothing and dance. Meanwhile, Buffy decides to accept her drink after Tom calls her too mature. Buffy then stumbles her way up to a bedroom to lie down and is soon unconscious. Richard comes in and starts touching her until Tom pulls him off, saying that the girls are not for him, but for the one they serve. Cordelia, meanwhile, is lying unconscious in the same room. When the girls wake up, the van is chained in the basement as an offering for a demon named, Mach named, named Machida, along with Callie, the girl who tried to escape from the frat house. Cordelia is chosen to be the first victim, but Buffy distracts the demon and breaks out of her chains just in time. Willow, Angel, and Giles head to the frat party meet up with Xander. They enter the house and beat up the frat guys. Willow realizes the girls are in the basement, and they enter as Tom and Buffy fight. <clears throat> Buffy gets the sword and cuts the demon in half, and the frat guys are arrested. Though Giles is still entirely happy that Buffy lied to him, he realizes he's been pushing Buffy too hard and promises to take it easy on her from now on. Afterward, everyone gathers at the bronze, where Cordelia has changed her standards now advocating dating younger men. Holding a newspaper, Santa reveals that the Delta Zeta Kappas have been sentenced to consecutive life sentences and that the bodies of past victims, dated back 50 years, have been found. Additionally, many corporations founded by former Delta Zetas have suffered because of the fraternity's inability to feed Machida. At that moment, Angel appears and asks if Buffy would like to get coffee with him sometime. She agrees and says she'll let him know. Aww. So now let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. The term patrolling is first used in this episode. Prior to this, Buffy's grave area exploits are referred to as hunting. Furthermore, this is the first time that she patrols for no specific purpose. From this point on, she will patrol nightly. This episode has Cordelia reiterate her belief that older boys are the ones she wants to date, as first mentioned in The Harvest. Cordelia teases Xander by saying, You could belong to a fraternity of rich and powerful men in the Bizarro World. In The Wish, Cordelia refers to The Wish first as Bizarro World. Giles asks Buffy how many people her age can say that they have a purpose, a commitment in life. 
Although she answers none, five years later in the episode Potential, she says a similar thing to, to the potential slayers. And although most people have no idea why they exist, the potentials do. They have a mission, a reason for being here. But Vic or Dealer wants to find themselves targeted together by demons and homecoming. They were tied together as well, and about to be victimized and out of mind, out of sight. A similar worshipping scenario is seen in Help, when another group of young men attempt to sacrifice the girl to the demon Avilas to improve their success in life. Buffy agrees to have coffee with Angel, marking the beginning of their formal dating relationship. They will ultimately break up one year later in the episode, The Prom. Aww. So now let's take a look at some production notes. Dave Fergual says that he wrote the episode, that when he wrote the episode, he thought that the, he had a great, invented a great demon name, Machida. He later realizes that Makita was the brand name of, of some equipment, some equipment used on, the sh used on the show. Makita is also the name of a city in Japan. In the future at a Buffy Beach Diary, Marty Noxon acknowledged the phallic imagery in this episode and confessed, yes, it is a metaphor. Robert Eckin Downs, the actor who plays Makita in, the, in this episode, returns an angel to portray an, unten, to portray an unidentified Pokalite demon in the episode, Dead End. Hmm. And now let's take a look at some pop culture references. Buffy says, there's a kind of hush all over Sunnydale, provides a song, there's a kind of hush by Hermit's by Herman's Hermits in 1967 and The Carpenters in 1976. Xander's line, Okay, boots, start a walk-in. Paraphrase the song, These boots are made for a walk-in by Nancy Sinatra in 1966. Cordelia teases Xander by saying, you could, walk, you could belong to a fraternity of rich and powerful men in the bizarro world. This is a reference to DC Comics' fictional home planet of the Superman enemy Bizarro, where everything is backwards or, dis or, dis or distorted. At the frat party, Cordelia mentions 48-inch televisions, 48 televisions on satellite feed. At the time, most televisions were based on CRT technology and limited to less than 40 inches, and satellite reception was not common for consumer use. Also at the party, Richard Nelson mentions his junk bonds, which is a term used for bonds which are considered high risk but also high yield. In this case, them being from Argentina, which at the time was considered an emerging market and therefore high risk. And now finally, let's take a look at some goofs. When Buffy's fighting Makita, her shoes are black flats. Who shoes are chunky black heels when she's finished talk she's finished talking with Giles and walking up the stairs. Even though the frat boys were just caught, Xander reads in the paper that they've all been sentenced to consecutive life sentences. Yeah, that is kind of interesting though, huh? I guess the justice system must work kind of fast in the Buffy universe, so there you go. I mean, maybe, I don't know. That's just me talking, so yeah. <laughs> so overall, I think this episode is pretty okay, and not sure why this episode is called Reptile Boy, but eh, I'm not. But hey, I don't come with these episode names, so there you go. <laughs> so overall, I give Reptile Boy three vampire steaks out of five. But anyway, tune in a bit as we take a look at the final episode of the day, Halloween. So until then, here endeth the lesson.